Guys, I'm back with another video for you today. I've got Dahlia here again. We did a video probably four years ago, five years ago, on this house, Bruno Acampora fragrances. And we're doing an updated video today and we're gonna talk about seven different Bruno Acampora fragrances. If you're curious to learn about this house from Italy, from Naples, then please stay tuned. So we're going to talk about uh, the house of uh, Bruno Acampora today and seven fragrances from their Extra de Parfum concentration. And we're going to start off with a fragrance both you and I know about. Uh, it's called Azzurro di Capri and uh, inspired by the island of Capri. And it's a white floral bouquet. Yes. You wear this one. I do. I have the dabber, um, the small... The oil? Oil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this features notes of mandarin, bergamot, jasmine, orange blossom, lily of the valley, amber, cedar, patchouli, and musk. So it's a white floral, but it's a fresher white floral. It's got that kind of tropical island, like, lay over your head if you've been to Hawaii, kind of plumeria. <laughs> it's more like in the plumeria space, although that's not in there. No, yeah. Um, I feel like uh, definitely there's a humidity about this one mm -hmm. because it's very, very, like... I don't know, there's a lushness about it, and I think the, the flowers that are in here feel like they're overgrown, so they're very mature smelling, really ripe smelling, mm -hmm. and that whole humid uh, weather that they get there, yeah, the day that you and I were there. Very hot. Very hot day, and I think this fragrance uh, really captures the island. Uh, there's not a lot of sea smells in here. We don't get sea. Which I'm not mad about. Yeah, I'm not mad about it either, because I don't really It's very care. verdant, very, uh, as you said, in bloom, and... Uh, not like budding and it's also not the kind of heavy nighttime white floral it's um like a daytime. fresh yeah yeah daytime should we take a smell uh we could do we, do we want to do the yeah the perfume guy <laughs> So, uh, Bruno Acampora fragrances come in multiple concentrations and you have the oil that you said yeah uh, this is the extra de parfum yeah it's totally beautiful. Really beautiful white floral bouquet. It has a little bit of that grape kind of purpley-ness to mm. this concentration that's, um, I, it's, to me, to, the way my brain interprets it is grape soda. I, it doesn't make sense because that's <laughs> not there, but I, I don't, do you get that at all? A little bit. There's a fizziness about it. Mm. Sweet, kind of grapey. Like the Fanta in the... Yeah. Yeah. Totally. What else do we have? So we've got a fragrance called Volubilis. This one right here. Uh, again, these are all extra de parfum. I'm not too familiar with this. We're going to do first impressions of these today. Some of them I know a little more than others. This one I don't know much. So let's, let's see what this one's all about. Okay. This features notes of bergamot, peppermint, pink pepper, rose, iris, amber, vanilla musk, and patchouli. It's a very metallic rose. Um, Maybe it's the mint, um, but it's got a coldness to it. It's it doesn't seem warm at all. Even though they have that vanilla in there, I think it kind of is a very cold uh, rose, like you said. Yeah. And it's it's almost like a like a frozen rose, like a. Oh, I like that idea. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, like it's not on a bush. It's not blooming. It's. Do you know what it smells like to me? Like, you know how they used to do the roses in a book and they close on it? Oh. Totally reminds me of a rose that's dried up like that. But no potpourri. It's not... No, not potpourri at not all. Not potpourri. But yeah, it's it's very... Like just, when you open up that book and you smell that rose that's all dried up and it's got the, the smell of the book in there as well, kind of. That's what I'm and getting I, with this I, I do get the pepper as well. Um, yeah. Maybe it's the peppermint, because peppermint can be cold. When we first sprayed it, I got a lot of peppermint. It was like first... Thing you smell. It's, I haven't smelled this before. No. But it's not a rose per se. Rose is the thing that I smell the most, but yeah. it isn't. Not just about the rose. Right. Yeah. Rose is an ingredient. Yeah. Mm. So that is Volubilis, this one right here. If you know this house, let me know what are your thoughts and also let us know which one is your favorite uh, fragrance from this house. Okay, so. Egoi is next. Egoi. This one I really enjoyed. This one has a lot of patchouli. Oh, I should show them. Egoi. Yeah, this one's lemon, cedar, musk, and patchouli. Definitely. Yeah, oh, I'm getting much more patchouli 
in this one. It's a warmer, especially after the volubilis, it's much, much warmer. Sorry, I interrupted oh, you. No, what no, go ahead. Saying? No, it's lemon, cedar, musk, and patchouli. I like the combination. The musk and the patchouli together are really nice. That fresh, invigorating punch of lemon up top, and then, of course, the dry cedar. I think it's a great fragrance from this house. I like it more than the volubilis, for sure. The lemon and the cedar does give it a little bit of like a furniture kind of feel, but then the patchouli makes it more like a fragrance, mm. I think. Patchouli makes everything smell good. I, maybe you knew that I was a fan. <laughs> no, this is good. I, I really like Egoi. I don't know where the, what the name stands for, but uh, as a smell, the patchouli is really wonderful in this one, mm. so we like that. All right. Mm. This next one... This is my favorite. I don't have it, um, but it is on my wish list. Sundan. Um, this is a beautifully done sandalwood. A uh, very, very lovely um, mix of sandalwood and um, orange blossom, right? Mm, that's really good. So it's neroli, orange blossom, pink pepper, ambergris, cashmere wood, musk, and sandalwood. The neroli and the orange blossom kind of sweetens it. Uh, sandalwood can be very, like, warm and kind of... Medicinal to me sometimes. A little desserty sometimes as well. Can go gourmandy, yes, for sure. And this makes it sweet, but not in that way. Um, I've never smelled orange blossom and neroli with uh, sandalwood before like this, but the combination is really fantastic. I think that this one's really nice. Sun this done. Is, it, it's not. It's not a sandalwood I've smelled before. Yeah, totally good. Yeah. It's more like the orange blossom and neroli are really nicely playing with that sandalwood. I think they also gave it balance because they've added that pink pepper, which was cold in the volubilis, but here it takes the warmth from the sandalwood and makes it very neutral. So mm. it is neither cold nor warm. Um, I can see that. Mm -hmm. I can totally it's, see that. Yeah, this is this is special. This is really it's, nice. It's like you smell nice without you smelling specifically like anything. You smell clean and nice and classy. Are you generally a fan of sandalwood? No. No? Mm -mm. You don't have any sandalwood fragrances? I... not anymore. Oh, wow. They've moved through my collection. Okay. Would you add this? Yeah, it's on my wish list. It's on your wish list. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. All right. It's a good one. So the next one we're going to talk to you about is Vanil. So probably something to do with vanilla. Mm -hmm. I, I... I recognize the quality. Uh, this is too in the gourmand space uh, for my taste. Vanil, to me, is another fragrance that goes into the baby cat Vanna Gloria direction. I, from here, I can smell this, and it is um, like cake frosting to me. It's very vanillic. It's a bit vegetal. It's smoky like church. Lots of vanilla, and then there's that pink pepper, pepperiness. There's a lot of vanilla. I really love Vanna Gloria, and I really love baby cat. This is reminding me of uh, like an offspring of one of those fragrances. But I can see why you don't like it because it's overdose of vanilla. It's it, it's very like... <laughs> Put it, my hand away. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's very lovely, but it's a very... Cupcakes. Cupcakes at church. I saw a video where apparently the proper way to eat a cupcake is that you like tear it in half and you put the bottom on top of the frosting and then you have a sandwich. Oh. And then you don't get frosting everywhere. Cupcake sandwich. I, I don't know if that's actually proper, but... <laughs> okay. But that, that, that really, I haven't heard of that before, no, but that but sounds fun. I don't eat cupcakes that often, Not but... Not me neither. Somebody will okay. confirm or deny. I really like that I one. recognize that this is good. It is not my taste. Okay. It is too... Too gourmand for you. Yes. All right. The next one we're going to talk about is called Bruno, named after Bruno Acampora. Let us know if you guys know this house, and like I said, uh, let us know which fragrances you enjoy. They're from Italy, and I'll probably be seeing I them. I do like that little, like... Oh, I love that sound. The clicking sound I, that's... clicks into place. Yeah. So Bruno, on the other hand, features notes of grapefruit, cut grass, rose, saffron, cedar, amber, musk, sandalwood, patchouli, and resins. This is uber complex and it wears uber complex. It kind of takes on the characteristic of like something like uh, Middle Eastern because, you know, it has oud in there. It's very complex with a lot of things happening. Saffron making leatheriness, a bit of rose, the patchouli, the oud together, and of course resins. Thoughts? 
Everything you just said. Everything. I agree. Yeah. It, uh, very complex to me. It wears very complex. It has a lot of depth. Yeah. Um, it is that rose oud combo at the end of the day. That um, it, it rose oud and saffron, and this has all of those, and it's done well, and it's in good balance. But it's a little on the animalic side for me. Oh, it's good. Yeah. It, you know what it reminds me of? Um, Char the Fort Manly one. Charlatan? A little bit, but like not as not as dense. Oh, this one doesn't remind me of Charlatan whatsoever. It's more like a Middle Eastern oud kind of with light rose kind of a yeah. thing. Yeah. And then uh, finally we have musk gold. This so is like the one they're famous for. They're known for musk and musk gold. And now this is in the X-ray parfum concentration. Yeah. So the first time I saw this brand, Bruno Acampora, was on Katie Puckrick's channel back in the day. Oh. And she had the uh, oil with oh. the tiny cap of, okay. the, of the musk. Okay. And this is um, the musk gold. So uh, this isn't the original kind of musk, which smells very much like that. Um, not baby powder as such, but that uh, that kind of clean musk. This has a little more to it. What's so for me, uh, musk gold and musk original kind of do remind me of one another. And I've always thought that these musks from Bruno Acampora are totally different than other musks. They almost have a greenness about them, like green earth. I don't know, but the notes for musk gold are lavender, rose, jasmine, neroli, violet, amber, vanilla, patchouli, sandalwood, musk, floral, honey, floral honey. The floral honey is actually coming through for me. There's like a, but in a, like a dried out kind of a way. Like not dripping honey, mm. like. Honey crystals. Yeah, I mean, Something if that's a thing. Something weird like that, yeah. Yeah, like it, it has a, a lot of floral notes, but they're not, they're, they're more like that um, volubilis one where it's like that frozen or dried kind of floral effect. Mm, yeah. Yeah, for me, yeah, this is totally different. It definitely smells very unique and original for musk. It will not smell like any other musks that you would have in your collection going into the baby powdery direction or going into the kind of animalic direction. This is not animalic. It's very earthy, very green, uh, lots of flowers. It's almost like you're diving into a jungle and you're like walking through like this overgrowth of uh, greens and earth and uh, bushes and flowers. That's what it smells like to me. I don't get that. I don't get flowers in bloom. I get almost like what you described, but like in the off season where it's dried petals blowing and crunching underfoot kind of. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, I mean something is in bloom, like there's there's something green here, I agree, but it isn't like springtime. Mm. I wasn't thinking of springtime, I was thinking more like summer after the freshness is gone. Yeah. But I, I wasn't thinking of autumn either, because it doesn't smell like Autumn to me? Not autumn here, but autumn somewhere, maybe. Autumn somewhere, okay. I yeah, very... There's a lot of dried, dried smell to it, to me. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so that's Musk Gold, the last fragrance we're talking about from Bruno Acampora. We just wanted to do this video together to let you guys know, since the very first time I spoke about Bruno Acampora fragrances, you were on camera. So Dahlia's back to do that. So which out of the fragrances is your favorite? Uh, either... It's probably Sandan. Sandan? Sandan. Sandan. I like that one a lot. I have Azuro de Capri, Capri, but I like the um, oil concentration of it. It's kind of softer. Mm. Um, so of, I would say this Sandan is... It's, it's really difficult to take something so widely recognized, like sandalwood, um, and do something completely original and different and lovely with it. Well, I'm going to agree with you here because that's my favorite out of the bunch here as well. I've worn so much of the Azzurro de Capri. Maybe I've gotten bored of it. Mm. Sandan, I haven't worn a lot of. I think it's a fantastic smell. It's very original to combine the orange blossom and the neroli with the sandalwood. Mm -hmm. I think it's a magical combination. And then I would also pick the vanilla. I know you don't like it, but I love vanilla. And this is kind of reminding me of uh, 
baby cat and Vanna Gloria. And then I think the Egoi is nice too. Uh, those are the, the fragrances I like from what we just smelled here today. Mm -hmm. But Sandan, I think, beats, the Sandan, it's, but also it's quite the nice. Azuro de Capri is still, it's not new to me, but it's a very, very lovely white floral. It's beautiful. Very easy to wear, very, um, uh, it, it kind of somehow dances between the raindrops of every white floral cliche. Mm. It's not um, heavy, it's not soapy, it's it's just pretty. Beautiful, yeah, totally. I can see that on a wedding. Yeah. Totally wedding. Or like a, like a, if, if you, I don't know what kind of dressy epi occasions people have, but like if somebody did like a picnic where you were actually wearing a dress or like, you know, like, an Easter kind of a thing. Yeah, I could I could visualize Easter for that too because there's lilies in there, lily of the valley. But mm, pretty. Yeah, really pretty. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Let us know what you think about Bruno Acampora fragrances. Are you a fan? Have you never heard about the brand? Have you been curious to check out the brand? Let us know which one sounds the best to you. Put a comment down so we can find out. You can follow Dahlia at The Perfumed Dahlia. You can also follow me on Instagram and now on TikTok as well. It's The Perfume Guy. Of course, that's the name of the channel. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, did I say that already? That's right. Add a question or comment. <laughs> Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.